Welcome, my name is Julianne Nicholson and I'm greeting you with happiness. That was such a beautiful video that we had there, performance that was some of the girls too young to wed has supported from the Lifespring Academy in Nairobi. And many of these girls are too young to wed beneficiaries. Um, yes, welcome and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, the Too Young to Wed team is joining us from New York. I'm here in California, and I know we have folks joining us from Switzerland, from Iran, India, Kenya, London, Boston, and Australia. And we are so grateful for this opportunity to unite our global community of so many change makers, as well as introduce some of you to the work that we're doing here at Too Young to Wed. Um, I expect another Zoom call wasn't high on your list of things to do this weekend. So we really appreciate you being here. And it means so much to have you here with us to be able to share with you what your support has achieved. And together we can continue to use our collective impact and resources to empower with tools to amplify their voices, tell their stories and actively shift gender norms and narratives that have oppressed them. So we have a packed program for you that uh, couldn't happen without the generous support of our sponsors. We've got Canon also serving as the presenting sponsor of the Emerging Photographers Fellowship Award Program, which they will present later in the show, the Isabel Allende Foundation, and stay tuned for a wonderful speech from Isabel herself, the Candida Fund, Stephanie Freed Parencio Photography, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, forgive me if I'm not, the Wallace Global Fund, Nancy Borowick, Sejal Shah, Kathleen Bonk, Rotary Club of Peekskill, Photo Shelter, Camera Bits, and as well as all of our generous sponsors who are listed in the program book. 
Uh, and additionally, I'm thrilled to report that John and Jen Chen, through their family fund, have generously pledged to match donations made during this event. So it's a terrific opportunity to supercharge the impact of your giving to help end child marriage globally. And as I said, we do have a packed program for you, um, so I'll keep it brief. But I just wanted to say a little something about how this year has uh, impacted me personally. So I'm gonna read it so I don't get lost. <laughs> um, this year, what do we say about this year? To me, <clears throat> it's made me understand certain truths in my life that perhaps I'd managed to ignore or look away from with regular distractions of everyday life with our work, family, friends, travel, and all our regular preoccupations that we get distracted from the truth that we sometimes glimpse, but not this year. Those truths felt impossible to ignore this year. And one of those unignorable truths for me was understanding that whenever there's a crisis, it's the marginalized human beings of this planet, the voiceless who suffer the most. And so often it's women and young girls in the poor areas of our world who take the impact for the rest of humanity. And another truth that I couldn't look away from this year was understanding that people who are trying to alleviate the suffering of those victims of crisis are rare and that I should support them if I'm lucky enough to find them, which brings me to Stephanie Sinclair. And I was uh, introduced to her incredible work through National Geographic. I saw there was a print sale. Uh, so I looked at Too Young to Wet and I was so moved by the work they were doing and this crisis that I knew so little about and never heard anyone talk about. And so I ordered some prints and got a note from Stephanie um, when I received the prints, just saying hi and saying, um, if you ever wanna hear more, I'd love to chat. I was doing a little movie in upstate New York. So we met with her husband, Brian, in um, Hudson, New York. And she told me what they were doing and I was blown away. She's a, a powerful force, that Stephanie, and she makes it all seem pretty easy. Um, I hosted the first benefit they had in New York a couple of years ago, and it was an incredibly moving day and night to be with them in person, Stephanie and the group that she's surrounded her with, and two survivors of uh, Boko Haram kidnappings, Hawa and Yakaka, and I just feel so honored to be a part of, of this group. Um, and just to say that this year has often felt like we as a species are losing our way, we're losing our minds, we're losing our loved ones, we're losing our moral compass. And with Stephanie, I feel like I found someone authentic, someone real, someone who is serious about making a difference and someone who's doing it. She feels like a beacon of light in a dark year to me. And one, I feel very fortunate to see by. Oh my God. So, without further ado, <laughs> um, I just would love to introduce you to Stephanie Sinclair, a Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalist and founder and director of Too Young to Wet. Hi, Steph. Hi, Julianne. That was like the nicest thing I've ever said about me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a little confession. My husband wrote it because he knows my inner thoughts and he's a better writer. And so he put the words to paper and then I try to deliver them without crying. So together, you know, anyway, I, it's just, it's very true. I feel so, you can, and you can take your computers away. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you. Thank you so much, Julianne. And I, I feel you, my husband hooks me up a lot with some writing skills in my life. So, um, but um, yeah, I mean, I really appreciate everything you said. And this has obviously been like a nightmare year for everybody. And I, we are humbly here today um, having a holiday, what we're trying to present is a holiday festival because there is so much to be grateful for, even though it's been so difficult, but we have you know, all endured so much loss, including myself, my dear father passed away earlier this year. And um, you know, we've, we have supporters who've lost their jobs. I have family members who've lost their jobs. Like we have, it's a very difficult year, but you know, as a conflict photographer, I've always thought that like, even in the worst situations, 
you are surrounded and meet some of the people doing like just such admirable, beautiful things. And those are the things we're trying to celebrate today. You know, kind of take a moment to take a breath from the things we've suffered this year and look forward to um, look at all the helpers, look at all the wonderful people out there working so hard. And so, um, so I appreciate that everyone is here today with us. And I want to thank, take a special moment to thank um, the tm 2 Board of Directors. We had three members join our team this year, um, Hussein Farmani, Zain Habu, and Amelia Vasella. I, you know, we knew this was when the pandemic hit, we knew we were going to need some extra support. And they said, yes, they will join our team during a pandemic, which takes, very, uh, takes a very special person to do. And so I'm just grateful to have their support this year, in addition to our amazing, our other board of directors me members, and also our board of advisors, and all the people who've come together um, in our community to support girls, vulnerable girls during this difficult time. You know, unfortunately, the situation for girls has gotten much worse this year. Um, I wish that wasn't the case, but as per, you know, what we've seen in every single humanitarian crisis, girls suffer the worst. And we saw rates of, um, we saw, you know, domestic violence go through the roof right away. And, you know, even prior to the pandemic, girls were forced into marriage every two seconds. Now they're expecting an extra 13 million more girls to be married over the next decade. So we're coming together to basically, you know, show you some of the programs that we're doing, the way we've kind of, you know, been able to step up our immediate crisis response, thanks to our supporters. You know, none of this would be possible. None of our work would be possible without the supporters that we have, the people who are part of our community that we've mentioned before, and all the individuals that are out there now watching this that have supported us since we started. It's all of the things we're showing you today are because you are part of this team. So thank you. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to start by um, showing you a few videos and uh, particularly uh, uh, one, the first one will be from Yemen. And that is going to have, uh, we're going to share the work of our uh, partners, Solidarios Sin Fronteras, and that means Solidarity Without Borders. And thanks to them and uh, the Launch Good community that we were introduced to this year, they, um, you know, and every single one of you, uh, we were able to step in and start to provide, uh, you know, the schools were closed, so we had to go ahead and start providing food through the, um, you know, through directly to their homes. And so, uh, and now thankfully school is back, but this is a little video to show you what the incredible work they did this year. أود أن أنوه إلى أنه خلال المرحلة السابقة من خلال دعم هذه المنظمة استطعنا تلافي الكثير من حالات الزواج المبكرة للطفلات في الأماكن المستهدفة. أيضا ساعد جدا هذا البرنامج على دعم الأهالي للاستقرار في إحضار أطفالهم للدراسة في المدارس وعدم تغيب والحرص على جانب التعليم. كذلك تطورهم الدائم إلى الهجوم إلى الدراسة
that was amazing to see uh, in front of us the work that you're doing and the people that you're affecting there and those landscapes and those faces and those where people are living. It was very eye opening for me. Yeah, I mean, when they send those videos to us, I'm always just, you know, heartbroken at how devastating the war has been there and it's been going on so long. And so, um, so yeah, so um, I'm just so grateful for their work. So Darius is doing incredible work and I'm just, we're honored to be part of their journey. And um, so the next video we'd like to show you is some of our work from Nigeria. Um, we work with the Anti-Community Development Social Organization and there they are working with um, some of the Boko Haram survivors that we have uh, photographed and have been in our stories throughout the years, including Yakaka and Hawa. And um, so while we were uh, kind of in lockdown here in New York in March and April, um, the pandemic hadn't quite hit in northern Nigeria yet. And so we were able to kind of quickly start to get uh, COVID information to them and get um, information, just, just general food supplies. Remember when we were all stocking up on food so we didn't have to go to the grocery stores and be at more risk. So that's kind of, uh, so there was a food program that was also part of our initial emergency response. Here's the video. So great that you could get in there preemptively and bring those things, uh, education and supplies before COVID hit hard. Yeah, I mean, that was, you know, that's what we were trying to do. And, and I'm so grateful. I mean, IDS really came in there and immediately mobilized as well. And so we were just, we were grateful for their partnership on that. So um, one of the other places we did a lot of work this, this year was in Kenya. Um, we immediately, so we had about, um, we had many girls that were in boarding schools at the time. Many of them had left their, um, left their marriages, ran away from their marriages, and uh, the Seabrook Girls Foundation had, um, you know, had helped them, you know, do, you know, they were working on keeping them safe until they'd been, had they been reconciled. And, um, but when the lockdowns happened, what was unique in Kenya is that there were about 330 girls that they were working with at the time, and all of them got sent back to their homes, whether they were reconciled or not. So that was really terrifying for us because, you know, they left a violent situation and had to return. And, um, you know, so we immediately were, you know, mobilized to uh, go out and uh, we had uh, one of our partners, you know, SGF, but a man named Moses Letatoya specifically, and Simon, they both like went, you know, house to house, village to village, like over like, like 2000 miles, <laughs> like house to house in this incredible um, journey to go. And they had, um, we had families fill out forms, um, you know, saying like they promised not to cut them or marry them off during that time. And, um, and we just, the girls were saying like, thank you. I was terrified because I just, just felt so alone out here. Are and the families honoring those, those contracts that they signed? They have been, they have been. And so, because they told them they were going to get random visits. Uh -huh. Good <laughs> and idea. So, and so it worked. And, um, you know, but school is still out. And so that's right. been the problem. And so um, we also had a public, a, a public, awareness campaign. One of our girls, Nashaki, who is part of the, our Tahani photo workshop, she shared her story and on the radio and was like, please protect girls during this time, which was incredible. And um, we had several members of the government part of that and local chief. 
And, um, and then most recently, we are partnering with the, the IREP Foundation in Kenya and to do seed funding for their um, safe house. They're, you know, because right now, unfortunately, is a very difficult time. This is when a lot of girls get married over the holidays. And so, um, so yeah, so we are, uh, so that, that is just started and, you know, they've been, they immediately started as well. And um, that safe house is now in operation. Amazing. So the next thing is, you know, as we discussed earlier, we had the, uh, our New York Times piece come out, like all on Thursday. I saw that. It's so beautiful. And I, I mean, I'm still, I'm old school. I love the paper, but there is really something about the video experience of this piece that is remarkable and, and so affecting and engaging and feels like an interactive experience. It's so beautiful. I'm so happy for you guys. Thank you. And Jeremiah and Moses, Jeremiah Kupanoa, who you're going to hear from in a second, and Moses, they, uh, and we had a few other team members. We had, um, you know, some female translators and journalists, and we had just a big team working on this in the middle of COVID. So we had to keep the community safe that they were visiting. They had to be safe. And um, it was an incredible thing, they, but they spent two weeks in the field going village to village as well and did a beautiful job. And so I also, the Wallace Global Fund supported this project generously and made this possible. And the New York Times uh, opinion section did a beautiful job putting this interactive piece together and particularly uh, Jeffrey Henson Scales and uh, David Laspina really worked hard. Um, we agonized over all the different pieces and it was just, it was really powerful. So, um, so we have a small video of that too, uh, just of a conversation between Jeremiah and I, um, just to get a little back, uh, a little backstory after a few months of working on this project. So I'm pleased to be joined by Jeremiah Kibanoi today um, from Nairobi, Kenya. Jeremiah joined us for our big reporting project we did with the New York Times, and um, he was the videographer who went out and, and you know, interviewed all of these beautiful girls and you know, took their stories and made, you know, made these beautiful, moving portraits and um, just really heartfelt imagery that went along with our story. And he's been a great partner as far as a thought partner and kind of figuring out how to, how to report this story and what were the most important aspects to cover. So I'm really grateful to be joined by you today, Jeremiah. Thanks a lot, Stephanie. I really do appreciate being here today. So, well, first of all, tell me, what did you think of the article? I loved it. Um, it's going to bring lots of change. I have already seen different people sharing it and uh, lots of positive um, feedback, even from stakeholders who are working in the campaigns back here at home. And so when we kind of worked together and you went to Sebu County for Chiang to Wed, um, was the situation on the ground what you expected? There are stories of girls already having been cut during this period and more had been cut. Cutting doesn't happen uh, in broad daylight, especially when you're doing stories of that nature. But you'll find out that when we are gone, this is still happening. Yeah. To be honest, I was, I was kind of surprised at doing the reporting parts. Uh, process is just talking to different community-based organizations and hearing just how frequent it was, even, you know, as we were working on this story in August. And the trend still continues to date, to be honest. Um, when the girls still are, are at home, the parents are getting more strained financially, to be honest. It's going to be still challenging. The December holidays, which usually are, are a cutting season, would still, um, we still have that problem at this time. The girls really, I think it's a really challenging time for, for many girls at this time. But yeah, I, I think that there is some concerns that things will, will increase, but I'm hopeful that with this story, there'll be a little extra pressure um, during this time as well. What really struck me is how normalized these practices are, that the girls sometimes feel like it's something that should be done or something that's normal. Young girls who would be potential leaders, very smart girls. If you listen to them speaking in their native language, you'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. So I just look at those situations and feel like we are way ahead of that time as a country, as Kenya. But these things are happening. You know, what I've seen in kind of the more than 15 years that I've been working on this project is it 
advocacy and sharing stories, you know, sharing these stories about these girls and helping them seem accessible and, you know, that people can see their daughters and their sisters in their faces. The more we can hear from the girls themselves and about what they're going through, it's not kind of filtered through all these other different organizations and government authorities and, you know, and, you know, it's directly from them. The more we have the girls speaking for themselves, the more girls speak out about this issue. Um, I think more girls will see it as something that's not good and they will have role models to look up to. One big problem we have seen in those areas is girls having not been exposed to education sometimes only have the world view of the village and that really makes it difficult for them to know what's right, what's wrong. And this, uh, for example, if female genital mutilation happening to them, whether to run away or not, or be proud of it. So we really need to lift the girls' voices. Girls don't need to be cut to be married. Girls don't need to be cut uh, to be leaders in, in their communities. Then there will be little societal pressure. The Maasai, the Samburu, and many other communities the poor court in this country are mostly pastoralists the land is diminishing and people are slowly changing whether they want or not so we still have the responsibility of educating the community times are changing and people have to change with the time otherwise we will end up really suffering in future when we do not when we only empower half the population all right well that's beautiful thank you so much jeremiah i'm so grateful to have you part of our team thank you so much for joining us and just being part of this mission with us change one one girl's life change an entire generation so let's keep doing it Uh, Okay, we're back and I hear Jeremiah is watching. So thank you, Jeremiah, for the beautiful work that you've done over uh, over those few months. And I really do encourage everyone to go to New York Times and and look at the uh, opinion section, Too Young to Wed. It's a really remarkable and beautiful piece. Um, So thank you, Jeremiah. Uh, okay, so the next thing we're going to see, it's, a, it's an original work by a truly exceptional young woman named Sienna Campbell. She is Too Young to Wed's inaugural youth ambassador and has worked closely with Too Young to Wed to create a toolkit for our new virtual storytelling program, Resilient Girls, and is currently in her sophomore year at Harvard. And here she shares her original spoken word piece, Marta. We need not meet the woman across the room to know the one whose smile keeps the world spinning, whose laugh can summon sunlight to an ebony sky. She enters and her cheeks shimmer with rouge, her essence imbued with jet black, burgundy, and blue hues. Her twinkling eyes tell stories of silent strength that lets her overcome struggles ten times more massive than mountains, Martha. Everyone says, I'm just like you. But how can that be? Your smile, your eyes, your heart are too bright. I mean, you breathe softly and I'm at ease. Please don't say I don't know who I am because I can only be me. You carried my spirit and it's time to release. You gave me everything I never asked for, everything. I never knew I'd need. Your actions are a language only those closest to your heart can comprehend. I have watched you enough to know you are mother, lover, savior, and friend. You have borne the burden of countless bodies that you brought back to life. Your arms slip and slide beneath an ever thrashing tide, but without question, you will open them again. Marta walks across water in her dreams. She wishes to taste the wind, breathe the sea. She looks across the room, feeling lost, empty, seeking a sense of purpose, a reason to be. But the room is a mirror. She is the woman everyone sees when they look across the room. When they reach for the water, the wind slips through their fingers and they can't breathe the sea. 
Marta is a mirror that glitters with hope that we can be our own mirrors when the room disappears and we can't stand on two feet. Hope that the earth will hold us and so will she. And that was Sienna Campbell. And so I think I'm just going to wake up. I'm going to play this, this clip every morning now. This is going to be my entryway into the day. She's so beautiful and special. And I wish that I had half of that grace when I was 19 years <laughs> old. Um, and also, I watched the interview that you have with her and Rosilla, uh, who's a, a survivor of, of a, in Kenya of a child marriage. And... It's the first, the first episode, I believe. You can see it on the website. And to see the joy that each of them have, being able to discover each other and discover their shared experiences, despite living in two such you know, wildly different realities, it was really beautiful to watch. It's 10 minutes long, and I'm looking forward to, to continuing watching those. It's so great. Thank you. Yeah, we love that program. We kind of started it. Uh, with the new era creative space a local organization here that's doing incredible work with girls and um and uh just to kind of we were meeting these incredible girls here and incredible girls overseas and we were like we need to connect them and share share because we were the ones benefiting because we knew everybody but we wanted to share the kind of inspiration we were getting yeah well you can feel them being so appreciative of that and so nice to watch them together yeah especially during these times to feel more connected is so important so important, yeah, I, I loved it. Um, okay, so the next clip uh, is of the Tahani photo workshop in India. It's um, our video from a recent Tahani photo workshop there, which was held for the first time in a socially distanced and partly virtual formats. I know you are generally there, you're usually there for, for these workshops, so that must have been challenging and um, but maybe inspiring, finding a different way into to creating those those workshops. And I, I look forward to one day, hopefully being able to join you on one of those too. They are remarkable. Um, this one was sponsored by Canon. The Tahani Work Photo Workshop Program is an innovative art therapy and storytelling experience where survivors develop new tools to express themselves and advocate for the rights of vulnerable girls worldwide in a collective trauma healing experience. In fact, just this Thursday, the young women who participated in this workshop presented their stories and images at the U.S. embassies and consulates in India, Sri Lanka, and Nepal. It's amazing you can get these girls in front of these people and in these doors. It's really, that's one of the things that astounds me about what you're able to do. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, it was a virtual exhibition, but we were so grateful that these embassies and consulates got this, got everything together to do that. And, um, yeah, um, I hope you enjoy the video. It's really, they, these women are unbelievable. And our team in Kenya, I mean, in India was insanely amazing throughout this whole thing. So enjoy. My name is Ritu and I'm 25 years old. In 2012, when I was attacked on me, तो मेरे लिए भी शॉकिंग था मैं 17 साल की थी और जिसने मेरे ऊपर अटैक करवाया वो 39 इयर्स का था और मतलब ये शॉकिंग है कि वो मेरा कजन ब्रदर था और मैं हिंदू हूं और हिंदुओं में शादी मतलब नहीं हो सकती है कजन ब्रदर से इंडिया हैज द हाईएस्ट नंबर ऑफ चाइल्ड मैरिजेस इन द वर्ल्ड इट्स इंपैक्ट कैन मैनिफेस्ट इन मेनी हार्मफुल वेज व्हेन गर्ल्स रिफ्यूज दीस प्रपोजल्स Scorned suitors often look for retribution and targeted girls can experience violence, such as acid attacks. The Indian state of Uttar Pradesh, where we are holding this year's Tahani photo workshop, currently has the highest rates of acid attacks and child marriages in the country. Even though we had to do this workshop maintaining COVID-19 precautions, this year seems to be especially fitting to discuss healing through self-expression. I am in New York and 
I was unfortunately unable to join you because of coronavirus. So it's, it's a pleasure to be here. I've made my screen as from Lucknow, so at least I could be there in spirit in some way. And I think it's going to be a great week. We're called Too Young to Wed, and our mission is to empower girls and end child marriage. Photography is also a way that we can show it without saying it. When I knew that uh, photography is a workshop, I felt that I would get to learn something. We did this exercise of self-portraits, and the kind of stories that the girls came back with was phenomenal. The moment when that person first decides to face the camera head on, I think that's a very powerful moment. These workshops are a brilliant way to equip people who've gone through any form of trauma to be able to use art as a form of self-expression and therapy. In these three days, we had a smile on our friends, who were happy to see how they were happy, how they were happy, how they were taking their photos. It felt like the light was going to be there. At that time, it was when I was going to face cover. लोग मुझे गलत समझते थे, लेकिन आज मैं फेस ओपन करके चलती हूँ, सामने वाले को बताती हूँ कि भाई हम गलत नहीं हैं, करने वाला गलत है। फोटो भी और अपनी स्टोरी शेयर करना बहुत दोनों ही बहुत जरूरी है। अंदर घाव लेके बैठी हूँ, बट मैं उस चीज को भूल जा रही थी, क्योंकि वो चीज मैंने � over the course of three days, we've told them about photography and we've tried to tell them how photography could be a means for them to be for self-expression. But what they have taught us is way more powerful. As we used to see photos of others, we used to see the exhibition, we used to see the painting, how it was made. Today, some people have seen our photos, so this is a very big thing, that we will see the photos of our photos in the exhibition, and people will see it. They will comment on it. लोग हमारे बारे में जानेंगे, हमसे कुछ पूछेंगे, सवाल जवाब करेंगे तो हमें बताने में खुशी होगी। Oh, Stephanie. That video is so, so much. I think it's incredible that you can bring these women together for them to share their stories. And as that one woman said, drop her shame, right? It's not, she didn't do something bad. Something bad was done to her and she doesn't have to hide her face and to see their joy in finding a way to express their stories and share it with people. And, you know, it's such a, it's such a beautiful thing that you do for them. Well, thank you so much. And, you know, I think, I mean, and obviously this is a collective effort. There are many people on our team who are doing, you know, who are working hard to bring this, bring these things together. And, um, and these girls were definitely, these young women were definitely, you know, had been a long part on their healing journey, even before we met them. But um, I actually photographed them for National Geographic a few years ago, and that's how we got connected. And, um, but yeah, I'm so proud of them. And just the, you know, photography, has a transformative healing thing uh, about it. And, um, and that's what I found as a photographer. And, um, and so why I thought this could work uh, in, in, in giving them an opportunity to tell their own story. So it's been- How I found you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's very, yeah, it's, it's growing. It's really, it really is, it really is powerful. And that brings me to the next ins uh, installment that we have of this um, event tonight, or uh, today, we have, depending where you're at. <laughs> um, and uh, we have up next is our emerging, our inaugural uh, Emerging Photographers Fellowship. And it's a fellowship, uh, not just a grant, because this is kind of a longer term relationship with um, young emerging photographers, or just emerging photographers in countries with deep gender disparity who are telling their own stories of their own communities. You know, I've been working on this issue for, you know, 17 plus years now. And, um, but to see people start uh, telling their own stories through the workshops that Canon gener generously supported and the Candida Fund as well, who's been part of our journey just during this whole time. Um, but also, you know, they're now sponsoring our, uh, our, they're the presenting sponsor of our Emerging Photographers Fellowship. And so uh, this fellowship comes with, uh, Kenneth USA is helping to provide, it's providing a $5,000 
scholarship to continue doing their uh, doing the work that's so so important and needs to be seen, and also giving them a new uh, this year's recipient a new mirrorless camera, the Canon um, R6, which is a very very nice camera. And so uh, so she's very excited. And so to announce this year's recipient. I'm handing it over to Rita Dubay. She's Canon's Senior Director for CX Marketing and Strategy uh, and Planning. Thank you, Stephanie. And on behalf of Canon, I am so honored to be able to introduce the very first Emerging Photographer Fellowship. At Canon, we believe in celebrating all different types of creative expression. The power of imaging is so impactful because it can help document, build those stories, and of course, share those stories. There is something so special about being able to do this in order to bring people all over the world together. And it's supporting these types of initiatives that is so important to Canon because it is powerful. It is powerful because it enables and empowers women all over the world to share their stories. And it is my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce Somnia Abdel Rahman as the recipient of the first Emerging Photographer Fellowship. Congratulations. Thank you for all the work that you do. And thank you so much for sharing your voice with all of us. The committee came together and we all looked at your work and we were like, she's perfect for this. Well, I'm just going to say that it's going to happen if it's in the No, no, خلاص. you got it. Wow. You got it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you so much. So good. I didn't understand what you said, so... Um... <laughs> This is why Tessie is with us. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, wow. <laughs> because of my work as a journalist, I had to travel from Egypt and come here to Turkey because the current situation in Egypt is not safe anymore. Now I'm working on a personal project about female genital mutilation in Egypt. It's personal because I was cut when I was 10 years old. So my project covered the psychological and biological effects on women, which is very hard to heal. Also, I want to thank Too Young To It for their wonderful support and helping photographers like me. They're believing in developing my project and publishing my project It means so much to me. I'm also very excited to have mirrorless Canon camera and I will continue to use it to produce more projects. Thank you so much. منظر بشع كان الواحد بيذبح واحد انا ما كنتش اعرف ان هي اختل ساعتها احنا من على ايام اجدادنا واحنا بنطاهر ولو ما طهرتش ما حدش هيرضى يتجوزك خالص النساء في مصر مسلمات مسيحيات بيتختنوا بغض النظر عن ديانتهم وقعدت اسبوع عن زيت ما كنت في الدم ما كانش راضي يتوقف المجور بتاع عجين كده كانوا بيحطوه في شخل واحده ويحطوا المجور بين رجليها في النص عشان رجليها ما تلزقش في بعضيها فاكر اليوم ده بحس ان انا كل انسان اعرف ان هو عايز يطهر بنته او كده ببقى عايزه اذبحه بصراحه هو هنطهر عيالنا وعيالنا برضك هيطهروا عيالهم ان شاء الله زي ما احنا عايشين لحد ما الحياه تنتهي I am now privileged to introduce our next speaker, legendary Chilean American novelist and philanthropist, Isabel Allende. She started her foundation to pay homage to her daughter, Paula Frias, who was only 29 when she passed away in 1992. During, during her short but remarkable life, Paula regularly volunteered in poor communities, offering her time and skills as an educator and psychologist. She cared deeply for others, and when in doubt, her motto was, what was the most generous thing to do? I love that. The foundation, based on Paula's ideals of service and compassion, was created to continue her work. 
The Isabel Allende Foundation is a longtime grantor and partner to Too Young to Wed, making many of our programs, initiatives, and matching campaigns possible. And we are so grateful for their incredible support. Absolutely. So here's, here's Isabel. 25 years ago, I created the Isabel Allende Foundation, whose mission it is to invest in the power of women and girls. And how do we do that? So especially with girls, trying to provide education, protection from violence and exploitation, and healthcare. This is exactly what Too Young to Wed does. So we've been supporting this organization for a very long time. We believe in the work they do. They provide education for girls so that they will not have to submit to a marriage that is way too premature when their bodies and their minds are not ready and that cuts them off any other options in life. They become wives, servants really of the other family and mothers before they are ready for it. By protecting these girls, giving them education and providing health care, which sometimes is as simple as pads, Stephanie Sinclair and Too Young to Wed are doing a fantastic job. They need all our support. Pretty amazing, Stephanie, that um, she is one of your biggest supporters. And uh, what a lucky thing that you two found each other. We're so grateful. Yeah. Um, and as Isabel so eloquently expressed, uh, none of this critical work would be possible without the generous support of the community. According to a media trend analysis report commissioned by the Candida Fund among the nonprofit community, Too Young to Wed continued to be one of the smallest groups with the largest reach. I sometimes say that you are small but mighty because with, with not practically much the the work that you do is remarkable the the corners you reach as well as um you know the people and and in in government and in changing laws it's remarkable as a reminder we are thrilled to share that john and jen chen through their family fund have generously pledged to match all donations made during the event and so your gift will go twice as far in helping to end child marriage globally so go ahead and visit tooyoungtowed.org where you'll see a menu of different opportunities to make an impact. And no gift is too small or too large. Every, contrib uh, every contribution makes a true difference. Um, I'd also like to highlight Too Young to Wed's current print sale where you can choose from six stunning 10 by 15 photographic prints by internationally acclaimed female photographers from across the globe. And if you order between now and December 14th, your order will arrive by uh, the 24th, hint, hint. <laughs> and uh, all proceeds from the sale benefits to Young to Wed. It was my introduction. And I've continued to, to give prints every, every year and um, people are blown away by them. They're always happy to receive them. They're so stunning. Thank you. And this year's lineup of photographers is ridiculous. I mean, there's National Geographic photographers. There's just, I mean, photographers from Afghanistan. I mean, it's just, a, it's beautiful. The work is gorgeous. The women are incredible. Their bios are all on, on the page. And it's just, they're all good. We wish you're like, well, we want them all. <laughs> I know. I don't know how, you, I was wondering how you choose actually, because I was then, I was so happy to, you know, you had on, I don't remember, I think it was on Instagram, you had each of their, um, the addresses so you could go. So I went to each of their pages and looked at the other work that they've been doing. And it's amazing. And I feel like, you know, something about this year is I have felt sometimes like, oh, it's a shared experience, COVID. And actually, to a certain degree, yes. But to another degree, no, not at all. And people are having wildly different experiences of this. And I was looking at some of these photos, and it was just a reminder, a wake-up call of like, oh, your Zoom's not working well, or, you know, you can't go to that restaurant you love. Like, it's okay you're going to be okay. And these people with such grace are out there in the field sort of sharing these stories with us, which is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So the next segment, so the next uh, video that we have is my dear friend and television daughter, Ali Ganino. We worked together on the red road, a Sundance show a few years ago, and she's a, a beautiful young woman with a singer, songwriter, yeah. 
uh, actress and she has a, a little, a little entertainment for us here, Allie. Hey everyone, it's Ali Gonino and I'm so thrilled to be playing some music here for you today. Thank you, Julianne Nicholson, for asking me to be a part of this event and to Too Young to Wed for doing all of the incredible and important work that you do throughout the world to raise awareness and raise funds to end child marriage. This is a tradition that is, I can't even believe it was something to begin with, but yet here we are. Um, but we are here and we can do something about it. I grew up with little nieces and nephews, but with little nieces and I have so many women, so many beautiful women in my life who I consider to be sisters of mine and their independence, their sovereignty, their personal agency, their right to choose for themselves what kinds of lives they wanna live, whether it be choosing their spiritual faith or you know, choosing who they want to love, when they want to love them, if and when, or maybe not even at all to get married. Um, just all of those choices that come with leading an authentic life, those choices should be for us to make for ourselves. And the more that we support women, the more that we support and believe in girls from a very young age in their quest in their development to become who they're meant to be in this world, the better off we all are. So I'm so grateful to be a part of this. And I want to thank you for being here because 2020 has been anything but a certain or easy year. Um, so I want to thank you for choosing to spend your last few moments of this year with us and for educating yourself and for donating and supporting Too Young to Wed. All right, I'll get to the music. If you know the song, feel free to sing along. No one can hear you, you're at home. Sending you all love from Nashville, Tennessee. Stay safe, stay cool. Allie, thank you so much. That was beautiful. I was also just saying this, Stephanie, one of the great things about these events is that 
uh, is introducing people to this organization because everyone, once they're in, they're, they're hooked and feeling the sense of community. Uh, it's been really wonderful to me, for me to feel a part of it and to, and to help grow it. And, um, and Allie was a, a, nice, a nice part of that this year. So thank you, Allie. And thank you all so much for spending this time with us and your inspiring generosity. Um, Stephanie, do you want to say any, anything else in particular or just? I mean, just like what you were saying. I mean, I think, you know, we've been around for a few years now. And I think that what's been so beautiful is to have such you know, it's, a, it's an honor and privilege to support these young women and girls around the world. Um, but it's also an honor and privilege to like have all these amazing people in our community who care so much. I, I brag to people that like, I don't spend time with anyone who's not amazing in my job, which is <laughs> like, that's such a gift. And so like everyone I deal with is just amazing people. So, um, I think that, uh, you know, the only thing is I would just, you know, remind people, a lot of people always say how to help. There's different ways to help. They can help through, you know, volunteering in different ways. They can help through, you know, our giving menu that's on our website with different ways to support us. And it shows, it breaks down the different ways that, um, you know, what different um, gifts will, will provide. But mostly I just, you know, I just want to thank you for being with us today and thank everyone out there who's been watching and being with us and spending your Saturday with us. Um, we've got crazy rainy weather here and, you know, I don't know where it's, in, it's like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night in some places, you know, midnight beyond and others. So I know people are watching we're everywhere and we're just so grateful. We're so grateful. And I hope that, you know, we know we presented some tough stuff today on some levels but I hope that you also feel the love and inspiration that we feel every day going to work and doing these things. So um, doing this type of, you know, this type of um, you know, daily dedication to, to these amazing, brave, uh, courageous women and girls around the world. Yes, well, thank you everyone and uh, wishing you a happy, healthy and safe holiday. And until next time, because there'll be another time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. And happy holidays, happy new year, all of that. Thank you so much.